welcome to another episode of Core Academy. We already covered what is consensus mechanism and today we are exploring a term you've no doubt heard so many times, which is cryptocurrency. Have you ever wondered what cryptocurrency or crypto for short is and how it's changing the way we think about money? These are the questions I will cover for you today. So let's dive in. So what is cryptocurrency? Recall that blockchains are distributed public ledgers that in most cases are decentralized and permissionless. A cryptocurrency is a form of blockchain native digital currency. The fact that it's built on blockchain means that unlike traditional currencies, it operates on decentralized networks, independent of central authorities like governments or banks. And because blockchains are ultimately ledgers, all transactions are kept in a public record to anyone can verify. The best known cryptocurrency is of course Bitcoin. The Bitcoin network consists of all the nodes participating in the Bitcoin project by validating transactions, mining blocks and so on. The Bitcoin currency is built on top of this network and it consists of pieces of value, that is Bitcoin, exchanged between the nodes to pay for goods and services or as a reward for block mining. So how does a cryptocurrency work? So there are different ways to build a cryptocurrency, but any good cryptocurrency has to solve the same set of basic monetary problems. A non-exhaustive list of these problems includes how do I prove the currency I'm holding is mine? How do we prevent people from spending the same money more than once. Third, how do we prevent fraud and counterfeiting? So skipping over all of the fascinating technical details, cryptocurrencies by and large solve all these problems cryptographically. Bitcoin transactions, for example, have to be signed with a unique private key, proving ownership. In addition, the accounting rules built into the Bitcoin protocol ensures that no one can just create a new Bitcoin out of thin air, so that prevents counterfeiting. And the distributed ledger tracks every Bitcoin ever produced, which prevents double spending. So now that we've worked through the fundamental concept, uh, let's turn to the many ways in which cryptocurrencies are being used today. A currency. Paying with crypto can be done almost in instantaneously to any internet connected place in the world, making transactions both fast and efficient. Another way is investments. A similar use of cryptocurrency is an investment vehicle. As Bitcoin and other projects have been more prominent in value of their associated currencies has increased, so many have chosen to hodl their crypto as a hedge against inflation. As you no doubt know, however, the value of these currencies can fluctuate wildly, so do your own research. And remember, nothing in this video should be taken as investment advice. Another way that crypto is used is a smart contracts. Smart contracts are a way of creating a code-based agreement between different parties that automatically executes whenever certain conditions are met. You could sign a smart contract to build a web application for a client with cryptocurrency rewards unlike as a different milestones are rich. Next one is governance. So with entities like decentralized autonomous organizations, DAOs, cryptocurrencies can form part of overall governance structure. So tokens might be used by stakeholders to vote for one project over another, for instance. As with any technological Logical innovation, cryptocurrencies come with their own set of advantages and challenges. The key advantages of cryptocurrencies are that they are secure, transparent and permissionless. Cryptocurrencies are secured by robust cryptographic protocols. In order to spend your Bitcoin, you must sign a transaction with a unique private key that only you know, making it exceedingly difficult for anyone to take it from you without your consent. In the case of public blockchains, all transactions are added to distributed public ledger, meaning that they can be viewed and verified by anyone in the network. It's not hard to see how this disincentivizes fraud or bad behavior. Anyone who knows how to set up a wallet and interact with the blockchain protocol can join and participate. If you want to send money to a relative in another part of the world, no government, bank or intermediary can stop that from happening. The key disadvantages of cryptocurrencies are their volatility, concerns over their long-term regulatory status and myriad potential 
potential misuses. As things stand today, even well-established projects like Bitcoin still see wild swings in price. So Bitcoin might climb to an all-time high one day just to lose 50% of its value over the course of the next few weeks. There are also regulatory concerns. By and large, governments around the world seem not to know exactly what to do about cryptocurrencies. As evidence of this, witness the lengthy and ongoing debates over whether the American Security and Exchange Commission should count Ethereum as a security. So ultimately, it remains unclear what laws will be passed around the use of status of cryptocurrencies and that presents a counting challenge for the communities building them. Speaking of the use of cryptocurrencies, one of the oldest concerns around them is how they might be used for various kinds of illicit activity. So ransomware groups, human trafficking rings, drug dealers, uh, and so on have all exploited the decentralized, permissionless nature of blockchain to further their criminal enterprise. Though this is and has always been a very small friction of the activities occurring on the blockchain, it nevertheless focuses scrutiny on the space and can discourage people from becoming involved in it. So to conclude, Cryptocurrencies represent a remarkable shift in our understanding and use of currency. They are a manifestation of our financial future, digital, decentralized, and secured by advanced cryptography. To continue learning with us, stay tuned for another lesson. And if you want to revise anything, you can go back to previous lessons. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.